What is an application without navigation? So currently in Bug Porter, we have multiple pages in our .NMI application. We have a page with a form to report a bug. We have a sign up page and we have a sign in page. But currently we can't navigate between them. So let's implement navigation in our .NMI application and satisfy this fundamental use case. So we have a sprint set up to implement all of our navigation concerns. First, we want to navigate to the first page in our app on startup. This will likely be the sign in page. Then we want to navigate to the next page after signing up and signing in. And then we want to add links to navigate between the sign up and sign in pages. So let's get into it. First thing we want to do is navigate to the first page on startup and we'll get our first taste of navigation. So let's head over to bug porter and we're going to head over to the app shell, which I already have open here. So the app shell in .NMI is really where navigation begins. We define our routes and we map those routes to pages in our application. And by default, what .NMI is going to do is navigate to the first page in our app shell. So if we boot up our application, we should see the sign up page because it's the first page in our app shell. Here we go. Sign up. So we could reorder these to represent the first page that we want. We can move the sign in page to the top since we want to go to that when our app starts. But we could also do it more declaratively. So we could come over to our app.xamma.cs and we could override on start. So this on start method gets called when our .NMI application starts. And to navigate, we can take our shell current instance and we want to go to a sync and pass in the route that we want to go to. So that route in our case is the sign in route. So let's just copy that. And we want to do absolute routing. So we want to start from the top of our navigation tree. So that is represented by the root of our shell. And the route we want to go to is sign in. So this represents absolute routing. We're probably not going to get into the differences between relative and absolute routing here. But this will ensure that we go directly to our sign in page, which we indeed do. Hooray! So we did our first navigation. We're going to the right page when our application starts. So let's commit these changes and we'll commit this navigate to sign in page on startup. So we can close that out. That is complete. Now let's navigate to the next page after we sign up and sign in. So heading back over to bug porter, let's start with signing in. So after we sign in, we want to go to the report bug form. So where does that sign in take place? Well, let's go over to our features. We're dealing with the sign in feature and the logic that gets executed when we sign in is represented in the sign in command. So really all we want to do is after we sign in at the end of this command execution, we just want to take our shell and again, go to a sync. We're going to do absolute navigation again, not dealing with any kind of navigation hierarchy here, just going to navigate directly to the report bug route. And I would like to test this out, but I don't think I have a user created. So while we're here, let's go over to the sign up command. So this gets executed when we sign up. And after we sign up, we want to go to the sign in page. And I also realized we go to the sign in page when our application starts. I don't have a user to sign in with yet. I haven't created one. So we would have to go to the sign up page, but we can't get to the sign up page from the sign in page yet. So in reality, there's no way to test this new feature unless we hard code some things like going to the sign up page on startup. But I'm feeling pretty confident about these changes. Let's just go ahead and commit them and consider that we are going to the correct page after these actions. So that'll satisfy BGP 30, where we are navigating to the next page after sign up and sign in. Let's commit. And of course, we will test this out after we implement our next feature of adding links to navigate between the sign up and sign in pages. So we're able to get to the sign up form from the sign in form and then test this navigation that we just implemented. So let's move this in progress and add those links. So let's start with implementing the navigation from sign in to the sign up page. So on the sign in page, we're going to have some kind of button underneath our form with some text need an account sign up. And we'll throw some top margin on this as well, maybe about 10. And this doesn't really look good because it's the big purple button. Let's make this a little bit more discreet and look like a secondary action, not the primary action. 
So I have a background of transparent. Looks like we'll also have to get rid of the border. So border color will be transparent as well. And now we can't even see the button. So I think that's because the text is white. Let's make the text color black. Doesn't really look clickable though. So let's make it blue instead. So it looks like a link. And there we go. I think that looks okay. So now we just need to navigate to the sign up page when we click this button. And thinking about it, I don't think we need to spin up an MVVM command for this. So navigation in itself, by itself, is really just a UI concern. So I'm okay with doing this navigation in code behind actually. So what we're going to do is take this button and we're going to attach a pressed handler. So let's generate that. And right now it's just called button pressed. We'll change that later. And we can do our navigation here. So we can take our shell current, go to a sync, and we want to go to the sign up route. And again, just doing this navigation in code behind because by itself navigation, in my opinion, is just a UI concern. If we ever needed to do something with our data of our application or any kind of domain logic regarding navigation, then I would consider moving this into a command. I'm not sure what the use case specifically would be for that. So for now, let's just keep it in the UI. So click in the link. There we go. We go to the signup page. So now we want to have some kind of button on our signup page that takes us back to the sign in page if we need to go there. So we could just copy exactly what we did and paste it into the signup page. But I'm actually thinking that it would be neat and useful in my opinion to move this button into a reusable component where we can pass it some kind of attribute for the text to display and some kind of route name where when we click the button, it'll take us to the route that we specify via an attribute. And then we're just going to have a reusable link that we can throw anywhere in our application to get to the next page from any page. So this custom link component we want to create, where should we put it? It's not really related to our domain. Clearly it's not a page. So let's put it into the shared folder since this shared layer really represents things that could be applied in any applications. This generic link component could really work anywhere. So in here, we're going to have our link component and let's add a new item here. And I believe we can just make this a content view, XAML content view specifically. And we're going to call this link dot XAML. So for the UI, this is pretty straightforward. We're just going to grab our button from the sign in view. Let's copy that for now and paste that as the UI. And we'll also copy over our code behind button pressed event handler from the sign in view. Let's cut this out and paste this in the code behind. And now in the sign in view, we can reference our new link component. So we're going to reference the link and we're going to have to import this namespace. So let's get the shared namespace and point to that and actually we need to point specifically to the link namespace so let's rename this to link instead of shared and let's reference that namespace when we grab our link component there we go so we will display our link component in there which will display this button that we just moved to our common component so let's look at this and we should have the same functionality as before except we're one step closer to reusing this link component so there we go, click the link and still works fine. The only issue is that we have some values in this link component that are hard coded to the current use case we have of going to the signup page. So we have this text that mentions going to the signup page and also the route in our link component in the code behind is pointing to our signup page. So we need to generalize this so that our sign up view can use this link component and go to the sign in view. So the sign up view is going to have to pass different text to represent going to the sign in page and also need to pass the sign in route instead of the sign up route. So in order for our parent pages to pass these attributes to our link component, we want to use bindable properties. So bindable properties in .NMAUI allow us to define attributes on custom components that can be bound to. So if you're familiar with WPF, dependency properties in WPF are basically the equivalent of bindable properties in .NET MAUI. So I'll leave a link to the bindable property documentation in the description, but we're just gonna follow this real quick to 
get some bindable properties. So the first thing that we need to do is define our new bindable property. So let's just copy this example to get started and paste that in our link component, format this a bit, except ours is gonna be called the text property. And we're eventually gonna reference a text property, which we'll define in a bit. This will be a string property for our link component and we'll give it a default value of string.empty, which it might complain about this. We might have to make this a literal empty string. Not sure which one it complains about, but I know there are quirks between string.empty versus a literal empty string. Anyways, this represents our bindable property, but we also need to define an actual text property on our link instance that isn't static so that we can reference the values throughout our link component and the XAML and the code behind, etc. So we do that, that's called an accessor. Well, let's copy that, paste that in. This is called text, and we're referencing our text bindable property that we just defined. And even better, we can now use name of instead of the text text in order to reference this property that we wanna use for our binding. So this will give us a way to set the text that we want our link to display. We also want a bindable property for the route we want our link to go to. So this will be the route property. And we want to point to our route down here. So pointing to our route property, again, this is a string on our link component with a default of string.empty. And I also realized that this should not be bool for all these properties since we're dealing with strings, not booleans. There we go. And that is all the bindable properties that we need for our link component. So now that we have these properties, we can reference them. So referencing the route we want to go to, that's pretty straightforward. Let's just reference that property. Pretty straightforward to reference from code behind. A little bit tricky when referencing from the XAML. So of course we want to do a binding to the text, but by default, the binding context of this content view isn't going to be this code back here. It's going to be whatever our view model is. So let's explicitly set the binding context of our content view to be this literal content view instance. So to do that, we have to give this content view a name. Let's call it this. And we want our binding context to be this. And as you can see, I think we get IntelliSense now. There we go, we get text. Do we get route on here? Yes, we do. But we want to bind to text. There we go, sweet. And while we're here, let's rename this event handler to be not button pressed. Let's name it maybe link pressed is a bit better. And let's update our actual handler. There we go. So now if we head back up to our views, starting in the sign in view, we can set those properties. So let's set the text and that'll point to the sign up route. And then moving over to the sign up view, we're going to define a new link component we need to import our link namespace, let's grab that and use that. The route this time is gonna be sign in instead of sign up. And we'll change this to have an account, sign in. So now we're using our reusable link component. Let's test this out. So let's go to sign up. Oh, and we get a exception. What is our route? It is need an account, sign up. And that's because we messed this up and we're still referencing our text property, copy and paste. I'm not gonna say it's bad, but it's bad when you don't do it right. So I'm trying this again, there we go. Our navigation is working this time. Let's also test the navigation from before where after we sign up, we should go to the sign in page, which we do. And when we sign in, we go to the report bug form. Sweet, so that navigation is working as well. And we pretty much satisfied all of the current navigation concerns that we have. So let's commit these new changes, navigate between the sign in and sign up pages. Hooray. And that wraps up all the navigation concerns we have today. So just to summarize, we're navigating to the sign in page on startup. We're doing this explicitly, even though the app shell will go to the first shell content that we put in our shell by default. But if these ever got moved around for some reason, we always want to go to the sign-in page when our application starts, and that's exactly what we're doing. We also implemented navigation so that after we sign up, we go to the sign-in page in order to sign in, and after we sign in, we go to the report bug form 
in order to start actually using bug porter. And lastly, we implement a navigation between our sign in and sign up pages via this custom link component, which takes in the route we want to go to and some text for the link and does the navigation for us acting as a custom link component. And we chose this approach because again, navigation, really a UI concern. If we ever need to do business logic when we navigate, then we'll switch back to a command and handle the business logic then. But let's just address the concerns we have today, write less code when we have the chance and use this reusable link component, which I think is pretty awesome. So overall, hopefully you can apply these concepts to implement navigation in your own .NET MAUI application.